I welcome you to tonight's special session in Jesus' name. And I believe something will come on you. An impartation will come in your life. I will not go empty-handed. God bless you. I said, God bless you. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you for this impartation night. And I pray for every brother and every sister. Nobody will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. Enlighten us. Empower us. Send us forth with your power in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at First John chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20 and then verse 27. First John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an anointing from the Holy One. And ye know all things. Remember that John, the beloved, was speaking to the children, little children, and the young men in the Lord, and the fathers, the aged in the Lord. He's talking to all believers, actually. And now he says, we believers, you believers, you have an unction from the Holy One. There are times we have something, and we do not realize we have it. There are times, even in the physical, even in the natural, things we have until somebody points it out to us. And now John is pointing out, you have an unction. I have an unction. I have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. Don't ever say again, I don't know what I have. You have something. Look at verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you. The gifts of God are without repentance. Once he imparts and once he gives, it abides with us. It says, but the anointing which we have received of him abideth in you. And ye have need, no need, that any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you. That's what teaches in the present continuous tense. It teaches us and continues to teach us. And it says of all things, and it's truth, and it's no lie. Even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. I will abide. Who are the people he's been talking to? Having an unction, having an anointing. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. Beloved, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. All those they refer to in chapter 2 as little children and young men and fathers. Now it brings everybody together, you and I, all of us, and it says we're called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not beloved. Now are we the sons of God? When are we sons of God? Now. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him even as he is. Verse 3, And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Verse 8, the second part of verse 8, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might, somebody there tell me, destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil in your heart, in your life, in your body, 
in your profession, in your ministry, in your family, destroyed fully, finally, permanently tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm speaking to you on receiving a mighty anointing for an unprecedented ministry. Receiving a mighty anointing for an unprecedented ministry. Already we have seen that we have anointing. But we need to activate that anointing. We need to operate that anointing. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 21. It tells us in this uh, verse 21. Looks like it should be 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians Let's go to chapter 1. In chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now, he which establishes us with you is in Christ and has anointed us as anointed us, as anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You see the connection between the anointing and the Spirit there. When he says he anoints us, he doesn't anoint, anoint us with something physical, but with the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit comes on you, and abides on you, and operates in you, and He makes everything in ministry, everything in life, possible in your life, that's the anointing of the Spirit. Tonight, if you have not received, you are going to receive. If you have received already, there's a renewal in your life tonight. And from tonight, you will act differently. You will pray differently. You will move differently. You will minister differently in Jesus' name. Receiving a mighty anointing for an unprecedented ministry. Three things we're looking at. Number one, recognizing the all-inclusive anointing on the appointed son. He is our captain. He is our forerunner. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is a perfect example. We want to see, first of all, and recognize the all-inclusive anointing on the appointed son. Point number two, releasing the all-important anointing on the abiding sons. Sons of God, daughters of God, disciples of Christ, children of God, believers and ministers. He releases that all-important anointing upon every abiding son, every abiding daughter, every abiding servant tonight. You will not go empty-handed. Point number three, receiving an all-round anointing for an approved service. You are called to serve the Lord. And in whatever capacity you are serving the Lord, he has anointing for you. And you will do the work better. And your work will profit the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Receiving an all-round anointing for an approved service. Number one, recognizing the all-inclusive anointing on the appointed son. Recognizing the all inclusive anointing on the appointed son. We're coming to Luke chapter 4. As we come to Luke chapter 4, please understand about Jesus Christ. He's been introduced to us from the earlier chapters. And he had been tempted in this chapter 4 
but he overcame. But look at verse 1. It says, Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You recognize the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ? The Holy Ghost had come upon him. And then he says, after that, is now led by the Spirit. When you are anointed of the Holy Ghost, He will lead you in every direction. At a crossroads, He will lead you. Any challenge in your life, He will lead you. Look at verse 14. After the te temptation, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Temptation will not decrease the anointing. Trial will not decrease the anointing. Whatever the devil may try to do will not decrease the anointing in your life in Jesus' name. Now he came to the synagogue, look at verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. When God appoints and when God assigns, he also anoints. He gives you a work to do. He assigns a work to, for you to do. He appoints a work for you to do. And then he brings anointing to accomplish all that he has appointed you for. What did he anoint him for? Number one, to preach the gospel to the poor. You might think anybody can preach the gospel. Know the word, read the word, understand the word, and then give it out. But you see what the anointing, preaching becomes easier. Preaching becomes more fruitful. And preaching becomes more pungent and pointed at the people you are talking to. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. When the anointing is there, those who are broken hearted and those who are sorrowful, they are healed and they are sustained. And then to pray, to proclaim deliverance to the captives. Do you see the anointing here? It is all inclusive. There's no specialization. I can preach, but I cannot heal. I can heal, but I cannot bring deliverance. I can operate the spirit in deliverance, but I cannot remove a mountain. It's an all-round anointing. It's an all-inclusive anointing. It's coming upon you today. And the recovering of sight to the blind and to search at liberty. That's what he came to do. Now he's passing it on to us to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. You are going to discover that when you have anointing, and you are going to have the anointing, and you proclaim the word of God, people will not be turning away from you, their mind, their attention, and their concentration will be fastened upon you. If you have read about uh, Charles Finney, that's exactly what happened in his ministry. It's going to happen in your ministry. And the people will know there is something in your life they need. There's something in your ministry they need. Look at verse 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. When is the fulfillment in your life? This day. Let's look at Acts chapter 10. Reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10. Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. You see the anointing there? It wasn't a high priest that anointed him. And it wasn't a human being that anointed him. Even when he was circumcised, it's not the person that circumcised him that anointed him. And was baptized in water. And when John baptized him in water, 
John could not anoint him, but God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The Almighty God himself will anoint you tonight with the Holy Ghost and with power. It says here, he anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. The anointing we're talking about is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Immersion in the Holy Ghost. Operation in the Holy Ghost. And power will follow. Power will accompany that anointing. Who went about doing good and healing how many people? All that were oppressed of the devil, you will overcome the devil of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost will destroy every work of the devil in any life around you in Jesus' name. And it says, for God was with him. I want to tell you that everything Jesus did, he did by the Holy Ghost. And when you are anointed with the Holy Ghost, everything you do, everything you say, every act you make will come under the control of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Let's look at two verses of Scripture. We're looking at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. He cast out devils, he healed the sick by the Spirit of God. And then when he taught, when he gave commandment, he also did that by the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, we're looking at verse 2. So you understand, Christ healing the sick by the anointing. Christ casting out devils by the anointing of the Spirit. And Christ teaching the word by the anointing of the Spirit. And Christ giving commandment. He did by the Spirit. Look at Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up. Look at this. After he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Christ gave commandments. Christ gave teaching. Christ imparted to them everything they needed by the Holy Ghost. And we recognize already that everything he did, he did by the Holy Ghost. Now in your life, that anointing will come. Upon you, that anointing will come. When that anointing comes, what do we expect it will do? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 27, note it in your Bible, in your notebook, and it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. Every body will be taken off your shoulder. Every load, every oppression taken away from your shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck. Every yoke on your neck, broken and taken away in Jesus' name. And the yoke shall be destroyed because... And the yoke shall be destroyed because... And the yoke shall be destroyed because... Because of the anointing. The anointing that abides on us will destroy, will remove will cast off every yoke in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Releasing the all-important anointing on abiding sons. Please understand, this is for the abiding sons, abiding servants of God, abiding children of God. Look at John chapter 15. Gospel according to St. John chapter 15. 
It tells us in verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. The anointing does not just come upon every day can hurry, but thank God you are a child of God. Thank God you are a son, you are a daughter of God. And thank God you are a servant of God, and you will remain and abide in Jesus' name. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth what kind of fruit? I said, what kind of fruit? Much fruit. From today, you'll bear much fruit. As you abide in the Lord, more fruit, much fruit, great fruit, through your life and ministry in Jesus' name. For without me, ye can do nothing. Look at verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Every prayer you pray after this time will be answered in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. The name of Jesus will work mightily in your mouth. But you must believe that. You must believe that. You must believe that you are not just a candidate for the anointing. You are a conqueror with the anointing in Jesus' name. John chapter 14, reading from verse 12. John 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Who is he talking to here? He that believeth on me. The works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. <clears throat> Verse 13. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do. Whatsoever you will ask in his name, that he will do. <clears throat> you are going to put your name there now. <clears throat> whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever ye, your name, shall ask in his name, that he will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He will do it in Jesus' name. <clears throat> How does he do that? Because he has accepted us as his children. First John chapter 3, I read from verse 1. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me, that I should be called, say it for yourself, that I shall be called a son of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now am I a son of God. Anybody there? Now are you a son of God. And it does not yet appear what you will be, but you know. That when he shall appear, you will be like him. For you will see him 
not as he was, but as he is today glorified. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Do you know you can purify yourself? I said, do you know you can purify yourself? When you were young, somebody used to wash you up, cleanse you, purge you, even reduce your brushing of the teeth for you. But you grow to the level you are able to wash yourself and purge yourself. And it doesn't take you time nowadays. You go in, and before we finish a small brief discussion, you come out already. The same thing happens spiritually. You have now grown to the level you know the word of God, and you are clean through the word. The word will keep you clean. And you know about the blood of Jesus, and you come under the cleansing of that blood, the blood will purify you. And you know the promises of God. Now you can do it for yourself. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He takes away any sin will release unto him. And any sin will have released unto him long ago or recently or any time, he has taken everything away. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that doeth righteousness Anyone here doing righteousness, speaking righteousness, acting righteousness, and following after the example of Christ, the Lord confirm it in our lives. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Those ones are not here tonight. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might tell me, that he might destroy the works of the devil. No work of the devil will remain in your life in Jesus' name. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. He cannot sin. He cannot sin, because he is born of God. And in this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. That's of the past. All that is gone. I said all that is gone. Now, how do we release the anointing? We're coming to, and we need to give some illustration here so that that illustration will help you to know how the anointing is released and how you also receive that anointing when it is released. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're reading here from verse... 16. First Kings chapter 19, verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. See the instruction the Almighty God has given to Elijah that there is a man who will be in your place and will have the spirit and the anointing that you have. And so go to that Elisha and him you will anoint to be prophet in thy room. Verse 19. So he departed this 
and found Elisha, the Lord will find you today. The son of shepherds, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with him with the twelve. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle on him. Normally when people think of anointing, they think of oil. And they think that what we should do, if today is really an anointing uh, development service, we should bring bottles of oil and put upon everyone. But as you look at the scriptures, it's not always like that. He cast his mantle upon him. And he didn't, he didn't even tell him anything. And he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of oxen of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat and then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him he was an abiding son an abiding servant but the question is when was he anointed and how was he anointed we come to chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 9 we need to reorientate ourselves and we need to understand how the anointing is received and released verse 9 and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. Remember, God had told Elijah, He will anoint Elisha, and that anointing will make him a prophet like Elijah. And now he said, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Again, understand, there's no oil here. And even though there's no oil, Elisha was now going to get the anointing that the Almighty God had spoken about. And for you tonight, the Lord has spoken good concerning you. That the anointing without oil, but powerful but mighty, where the Holy Ghost will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I be taken, when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. Tonight, it shall be so unto thee. It shall be so unto thee. And you begin to do what you are not doing before. And begin to preach in a powerful way and have insight, enlightenment into the word of God than ever before in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked. They were not shaking. They were not screaming. Elisha was not um, doing anything extraordinary. They were talking together. And then it says that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Where is the anointing? How is Elijah going to be anointed? And Elijah saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. They were, they were parted. Tonight, after we are parted, the anointing will go back home with you. And he took hold of his own clothes and wrenched them in pieces. 
He was saying, I'm not going to be acting like I was acting before in my own style, in my own will, in my own way. I'm not going to be close with the source I had before in verse 13. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. He recognized the anointing that came upon him. And you will recognize the anointing as it comes upon you today. And he went and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also, he also, he also, Elijah had done it, now he also, by the grace of God, I have done it, and now you also. The same power, the same spirit, the same effectiveness, and the same breakthrough the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. And when he also had smitten the waters, departed hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Anybody going over there today? Into success, into victory, into conquering, into a miracle ministry. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, Tell me, the spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. They recognized the anointing had come. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Now, you see how the anointing came. Many people, if they are waiting for oil, they will never get what they ought to get. But tonight, you have it. Now, let's think about some people. Think about Moses. That man was greatly anointed. And yet, there was nobody that even laid hands on him. The Lord called him. And because the Lord called him, he sent him forth. And he only had a rod in the hand. And God said, throw it down. Became a serpent. Pick it up again. And then it became a rod again. The Lord proved to him, he already got the anointing. Think about Joshua. Joshua got the anointing. But oil was not poured upon him. Joshua got the anointing by Moses just laying hands on him and he transferred the anointing unto him. And whatever you have, if you want to transfer, you can transfer. I have a pen here. If I want to transfer it to you, we don't need to shout. I just say, have this pen and have it for good. Have it and keep on using it and you have it. And if I have anything, and I say, look at what I have. The Lord told me to give you this. If you accept that, you take it, it becomes yours in Jesus' name. Look at Samuel. How was Samuel anointed? He was sleeping. And even Eli, who should have directed him into great anointing, I couldn't understand when God was calling young Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, came back again. Samuel, Samuel got up, went to Eli. Sometimes Samuel, Samuel, then Eli said, he didn't lay hands on him. He didn't pour oil on him. He just said, if you hear your name again, say, speak, for thy servant hear it. When you read the story, you understand that uh, Samuel even omitted the word Lord when he responded. But all the same, without Eli laying hands on him, the anointing came. And tonight, the anointing has come. Think about Elijah himself. We have seen him, he just appeared. He said, according to my word, there will be no dew, there will be no rain. Who laid hands on him? Nobody. But God decided that he will have an anointing. And he will have a ministry that no other person before him ever had. And the anointing came. The same thing with you tonight. As you pray. And as we release it on you. It comes on you in Jesus name. 
you have heard about Jeremiah. How was Jeremiah anointed? Simple. The Lord called him. But he said, I cannot. I'm a child, O God. And the Lord said, don't say that again. That's why I child. And then he said, I have put the word in your mouth. As you go now, people will fight against you, but he will not prevail against you. That's how his own anointing came. You find about Daniel. And Daniel had such a great anointing that even when they threw him to the lion's den, lions could not hurt him. How did he have the anointing with all those prophecies that he gave? If you read all the prophecies of Daniel, they're so deep, deeper than anybody had given in the Old Testament. And yet, the anointing came as the Lord appointed him, and the Lord gave him what he gave him. And the Lord is going to give you what you need today. As you come to the New Testament, the twelve, the twelve apostles, how were they anointed? Jesus didn't even lay hands on them, and Jesus didn't pour oil on them. He just said, I give unto you power, the authority to cast out devils, the authority and the power to heal the sick, and he sent them forth. When they got to the field, they saw that they got what they never had before. And as you go back to the field, you're going to discover you'll have what you never demonstrated before in Jesus' name. How about the 70? The 70 after the 12, Jesus called them, sent them forth uh, two by two, and said, Go, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. They came back and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. He had the had the anointing. All the seventy, without hands being laid on them, without oil being poured on them, I'm telling you that tonight you have the anointing. You have heard about Stephen. Stephen and Philip were chosen so that they will distribute food. And the apostles never laid hands on them for miracle for signs and wonders they only laid hands on them to select them so they can distribute food to the believers but then Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith and full of power and even the people when they saw his face it was shining like that of an angel your life will be transfigured your life will be transformed and then Philip Philip was also no oil poured upon him. He went to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. And great miracles took place. Tonight, from tonight, miracles in your life. Power in your life. And then we think of Paul the Apostle. You would have thought a man like that, if he's going to be used in a mighty way, at least we should have Peter and James and John, the three of them at least come around and lay hands on him and give him impartation. No, there was a certain disciple, Ananias. And as was sent to him because he had been blinded by the light that he saw on the way to Damascus. And Ananias got there and said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you has sent me to you that you will have your eyes open and you receive the Holy Ghost. That's all. And then Paul went out and he manifested great power. I'm sure tonight, from tonight, you will go forth. You will break through. And you will manifest in Jesus' name. I want you to look at this example before we go to the last point. We're looking at Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. And in Numbers chapter 11, here we're reading what happened to the 70. Numbers chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 16. Numbers 11 verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee and I will come down 
and talk with thee there. And I will take, look at what God is saying, I will take up the Spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the body in of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Look at what God is doing here. He's going to take of the Spirit upon Moses, and he's going to put it upon the seventy elders. And yet after those seventy elders have been anointed that way, the spirit on Moses did not decrease. God can do that. That he takes water out of the ocean for seventy people to be saturated and to be totally refreshed. And yet the water in the ocean will not decrease. So these seventy came just like you are here tonight, something is about to happen. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. And then he goes on about those people. Look at verse 25. Verse 25, and the Lord came down. The Lord is here tonight. Is keeping the appointment as you are keeping the appointment. The Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. Let's stop there for a moment. Those seventy did not see the similitude of the Almighty God. Those seventy elders did not say, Moses, but you anointed Aaron to be the high priest and you poured oil upon him. If we are going to have the same spirit as you have, why don't you do what you did to Aaron? Moses said, this is God who is going to anoint you. And it is God who is going to put the spirit upon you. And the Lord came down. And even though they didn't see any sight, he took up the spirit upon Moses and he put it upon the seventy. You believe, you receive. Look at the latter part of verse 25. That when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. They prophesied and they did not stop. They prophesied, and there was nothing to stop them. From today, nothing will stop the flow of the anointing in your life. Look at this, verse 26. But there remain two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. They were not in the same, they were not in the hall. They were not in the tabernacle. They were something kept them in the camp. But they were part of the 70. And you are part of the leaders tonight. And because you are part, anywhere you are, the anointing comes upon you tonight in Jesus' name. It says of them that the Spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were reaching. Your name is written in the book of life. But were not out of the tabernacle, out into the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. Then ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad, do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Joshua was going to lay down a law, a rule that God has not laid down. He wanted to exclude those two people, but nobody will exclude you. And Moses said unto him, Embrace now for my sake. What God, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord 
not Moses, and the Lord, not Elijah, and the Lord, not anybody anointing them, and the Lord will put His Spirit upon them. Will put His Spirit upon them. It is yours tonight. I said it is yours tonight. Point number three now, receiving an all-round anointing for an approved ministry. Receiving an all-round anointing. An all-round anointing for an approved ministry. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Here we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah 29 verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which are put in thy mouth. This is the Lord doing it himself. My spirit I put upon you, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord from henceforth and forever. From henceforth and forever. After that anointing has now come. And the Lord himself, as he's going to do it tonight, puts that spirit upon you. And he anoints you today. What is going to be the consequence? Look at chapter 60 verse 1. Arise and shine. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord will be upon you in Jesus' name. You can read the whole chapter later yourself, but look at it from verse 18. Violence shall no more be had in thy land. No wasting to destroy within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation, and thy gate praise. The sun shall no more, uh, the sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither the brightness of the moon give, thee light, give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory. Thy God, thy glory. Verse 20, thy sun shall no more go down. Your zeal shall no more go down. Your power shall no more go down. The anointing will not dry up on your head in Jesus' name. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people shall also be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. A little church shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. And then that anointing will be effective in your life, in all our lives together, in Jesus' name. Now it's going to give you. I said now it's going to give you. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. We're reading from verse 18. Remember, this is how, how Christ gave the anointing to his disciples. He didn't touch them. He didn't lay hands on them. He didn't pour oil on them. He just gave them. And tonight, he will just give you. And as he gives you, you receive in Jesus' name. 
chapter 18 of Matthew, verse 18. Very I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It will happen to you. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Do you know that as the angel appeared unto Mary, the angel did not lay hands on Mary. The angel did not pour oil on Mary. The angel only spoke. In verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. The Holy Ghost and power, they go together. The Holy Ghost overshadow you, and the power of the highest shall, be, shall come upon thee. Therefore, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Highest. Look at verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Tonight, nothing shall be impossible. Now, verse 38. No hands laid upon Mary. No oil poured on, upon Mary. And Mary said... Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. Can you say that with me? Say that again. Look at verse 45. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Let me explain this to you. After Mary received that word from the angel, and the angel gave her information that even Elizabeth in her old age is pregnant and is expecting a baby. And so Mary went to Elizabeth. And remember, the husband of Elizabeth, Zechariah, was a high priest. And when Mary got there, Mary did not say, Elizabeth, can I ask for something? Can you tell your husband to lay hands on me, since he's the high priest, so that there will be a confirmation of what the angel had said? Not at all. She got there. And Elizabeth recognized that the Holy Ghost has overshadowed her. And the power of the highest has come upon her. Elizabeth now told her, he said, she said, Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her, not from the angel, but from, from the Lord tonight. The Lord has told you that anointing is coming upon you. The Lord has told you that He is releasing anointing without oil, without laying of hands. He's releasing that anointing upon you. As you believe, it will be so. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. Mark 16, 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are the believers here tonight? I said that the believers there tonight, if you are there tonight, rise up and identify yourself. This sign shall follow them that believe. Them, all of them, all of us, no exception tonight. Brother, no exception tonight. Sister, no exception tonight. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. 
If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Poison will not kill you. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, didn't lay hands on them. After the Lord had spoken unto them, didn't pour oil on them. After the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. And he sat down on the right hand of God. That is to make sure that what he said is carried out. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word. And confirming the word in your life and confirming the word. In your ministry and confirming the word. With the new anointing upon your life and confirming the word. For signs following, and the believing people of God said, yeah. Open your mouth and thank the Lord for giving you the anointing tonight. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of His power. All weakness taken away. All past failures taken away. Anointing. Anointing of the Spirit. Anointing of the Spirit. Blessed is, blessed is he that believes, because there shall be a performance of those things that he has been told by the Lord. Blessed is she, sister. Blessed is he, brother, who believes tonight a new anointing, a new power, a new unction released upon your life tonight. Remember those 70. The Lord said, bring them, Moses, and I will anoint them and take up the Spirit in you and transfer it to them. Anointing for you tonight. Transferring the anointing to you tonight. Transferring the power to you tonight. Holy Ghost anointing. Holy Ghost function. Power. Anointing, overflowing anointing, coming upon your life tonight. As you believe, it is done. As you believe, it is done. And then after the meeting, if you see the sick, lay hands on them, they'll get well. After the meeting tonight, you see anyone possessed of the devil? Speak of the word of power and authority. That devil will come out. The anointing is not in the head, it's in the heart. Out of your heart, out of your belly, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of anointing. Overflowing anointing. Overflowing power. Receive tonight. Receive tonight. Receive tonight. Remember Elisha? Elijah asked him, What do you want? And he expressed his desire. And he said, If you see me, so simple, you will have. And he saw him. And he said, My father, the chariot of Israel. And the mantle came down. And Elijah did not say, Pick it up. That's the power, that's the anointing, but he knew, he knew that mantle carried the anointing. And he took the mantle and he went back to River Jordan. And he did what Elijah had done before. The anointing had come. He knew the source from where the anointing came. And he did what that source had done.
and he got the same result. Go out and do the same thing God has helped me to do. The anointing is released on you. The name of Jesus will be mighty in your mouth. The promise of God will be yes and amen in your mouth. Jeremiah at the word and the anointing came. Ezekiel at the word and the anointing came. Daniel at the word and he believed. The anointing of the Holy Ghost had come upon him just like that. And the twelve and the seventy and Stephen and Philip and Paul and Mary, they all received no exception. The anointing comes upon you tonight. This sign shall follow them. This evidence will follow them. This manifestation will follow them. This oppression of the Spirit will follow them. Them that believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Faith will never be disappointed. Lord, I believe. Faith will speak out the word of authority. Lord, I believe mountains will move before you. Hills will be leveled before you. The valley will be filled before you. Problems will be solved as you open your mouth and declare the problem solved. As the Spirit came upon the seventy, they prophesied and they did not stop. They prophesied and did not cease. As the anointing came upon me that and eldered, even in the camp, even though they were not in the temple, anywhere you are now, anywhere you are now, hearing the word and the impartation and the release, the anointing comes upon you. An all-inclusive anointing, an all-important anointing, an all-round anointing. The Lord anoints you tonight. The Lord has assigned you, appointed you to something you have to do and the appropriate anointing comes along for the appointment you'll be approved of god internally you'll become different externally you become different every hindrance is taken away from your heart Every hindrance is taken away from your life. Release has come upon your life. Yokes have been broken in your life. All the hindrances of the past, all the faithlessness of the past, all the powerlessness of the past, all the hindrance, everything has been taken away. No more imprisonment. You are released. You are set free. You are loosed. Go forth and manifest. Go forth and do the work of God with the new strength, new power. Gideon, go in this thy might. No hands laid upon Gideon. Gideon, go in this thy might. No oil poured upon Gideon. Gideon, go in this thy might. And Gideon was saying, I'm the least in my father's house. And my father's house is the least in the land of Israel. The angel said, forget about that. No negative language. Go in your might. 
go in the mind. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And as the Spirit moved something outside the camp, and he began to manifest the power that he didn't know he had before. No hands laid upon something. No oil poured upon something. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. That Spirit is upon you tonight. Go and do exploits. Go and move mountains. Go and deliver the oppressed. Go and set the captives free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen in your life. Accomplishment in your life. A release in your life tonight. Power in your life tonight. Where you failed before, go out and now succeed. Where you were fearful before, go out now and be courageous. Where you were timid before, go out and be bold in Jesus' name. Receive your own anointing. Receive your own anointing. Receive your own anointing. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every brother, every sister here tonight, and in all our locations, our states, our regions, everywhere, where the word of God is coming forth now. Everywhere, in every, in every locality, everywhere in our nation here, everywhere in Africa here, as the servants of God here are receiving, give unto everyone in Jesus' name. Receive your own anointing right now. I release the power upon your life, authority upon your life. And I release the anointing that breaks every yoke upon you in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost is upon you now. The power is upon you now. You are the one to now activate it. And you are going to do exploits in the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. The power of God will never fail in your life. The power of the Holy Ghost will never fail in your life. As you go forth, great things will happen. Souls will be saved. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. In your own personal life, power that you have never known, you will have. Deliverance you have never known, you will have. Dominion, authority you have never known, you will have. Now, if anyone is sick in your family, wants to lay your hand on them, and you pronounce the word with the anointing you have now, miracle will start in your family. Your community, anywhere you go, you meet any problem, the Lord will use you like he used the rod of Moses. The Lord will use you like he used the mantle of Elijah. The word of God in your mouth will produce results. Go and bear fruit. Go and bear more fruit. Go and bear much fruit. And your fruit will abide and remain in Jesus' name. Next Tuesday will be our testimony day. As you come next Tuesday, between now and next Tuesday, manifestation of power, manifestation of anointing, impossibilities becoming possible. Go in strength, 
Go in power. Go with anointing. Come back with trial. Come back with testimony. Come back with victory. Come back with being more than a conqueror. Lord, fulfill it, accomplish it in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.